Hey everybody, what's up? It's Rob Dotson. Welcome back to the Alleycast Show. Today, I want to talk about how to do automated accessibility testing using the Axe library. So if you haven't heard of it before, Axe is a really useful utility. And one of the reasons why I like Axe is because they kind of have this whole mantra mission statement thing of making sure that their accessibility tests have zero false positives, meaning they only test stuff that they're really, really confident that they can say is you know either passing or failing. And the reason why I like that is because if you've got a really, really big team and you've, you're, you know, you don't have everyone maybe bought into accessibility testing, and you've got a tool that's maybe throwing like flaky errors or something like that. It might be easy for the team to just like disable that thing or to start ignoring it. So I love Axe because I like the idea of zero false positives and making sure that if something's failing, everyone on your team can kind of agree, like, hey, yeah, that's an actual issue. So to get started with Axe, follow me over here to my laptop. Over here, I'm just sort of showing the the GitHub page for Axe. It's made by uh, DQ. So this is DQ Labs organization. This is Axe Core, which is kind of like the library that powers everything. And you can scroll down to the readme and see they kind of talk about their philosophy, their, their manifesto, and things like that. Um, there's a few different ways to use Axe. So for instance, you can just, uh, as it shows here, you can just drop it as like a script tag onto a page, and it'll start logging errors that way. That's one way to go about it. Uh, but what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to use it as a Chrome extension, how to use it with Selenium, and how to use it uh, using the newly released Axe CLI. So let's get started with the Chrome extension. Um, I'm going to go over to the Chrome Web Store and uh, just look for Axe, like a chopping Axe. And you'll know it if you see this sort of this like a blue triangle thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to Chrome. Yep. So the extension is really useful if you just want to like maybe quickly look at a, a page or a few pages of your site. You don't have a whole automated testing workflow set up or anything like that. You just want to sort of look at a page and be like, you know, What's, what's broken here? So I'm going to go over to my blog. So this is uh, robdotson.me. Now, I know that there are some issues on this site. I, I found them during the making of this episode. And I, I'm going to leave them in so you can sort of see the process in action. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, open up my DevTools. And now that I have that Chrome extension installed, I've got this little Axe tab here. So I can click on that. And there's this big Analyze button. I run that, and it'll now show me over here on the left some of the issues that I have. For instance, I have elements that need to have better color contrast. Um, my HTML element needs to have a, a lang attribute to indicate the language that the page uses. And I have some links that need to have better discernible text. So right now, I have links that probably just say like more, whereas it could be a more fleshed out phrase. You know, it could be like, click here to read about you know, custom elements or something like that. So uh, let's check out this color contrast thing. So I've got 16 violations that it's showing me here. It tells me which of the sort of uh, standards that we're failing here. So a CAG 2 AA. And it'll also show me the uh, sort of like the selector path to get at the elements that are failing, right? So here I can see it's basically these anchor tags that are inside of my, uh, my post metadata headers. And what's really cool is I can click this More Info button, and it'll take me to a page called uh, DQ University, which is uh, sort of a resource that the folks at DQ run uh, along with Axe. And that'll just explain in more detail uh, what, what exactly is failing here, how to fix it, and also sort of the severity of the error. So for instance, you can see here that this is kind of like a, a critical failing when we have bad color contrast. But it's, it's useful so that way you've got like a ton of errors and you're trying to prioritize like which to work on first. You can say, OK, let's deal with the critical ones first, and then we can deal with the minor ones a little bit later. Right? So I love that they provide this resource. All right, so that's one way to go about things. You can use the extension to quickly look at a page. Another way to go about things is to use a tool like Selenium to do automated testing of your application. Selenium, if you haven't heard of it before, it's basically a tool that can drive your browser in an automated fashion. It can you know, click on things on the page, open URLs, send keyboard events. So to do that using Axe, there's another variation that we can use called Axe WebDriver. This is also available on the GitHubs. If you scroll down to the readme, it'll have getting started steps, so a few resources that we need to install. And then there's this really helpful snippet right here that we can actually just copy and paste. And we'll walk through what's happening in the snippet in just a sec. Uh, but let's start by installing these dependencies. So we need Axe Core, right? That, that library I was kind of showing before. And we're going to need Axe WebDriver JS. So I'll go over to my terminal. And I've actually already got uh, my little command ready to go here. So I'm going to npm install, save. And I'm saving to my dev dependencies, because this is probably not something I want to ship in production. This is probably something I just want during development time. So I'm installing Axe Core. I'm also installing Selenium WebDriver. Uh, at, at the time of you know, this recording, this is also a, a dependency of the, uh, the Axe WebDriver project. So we want to make sure to install Selenium WebDriver. And then finally, Axe WebDriver.js. So we'll install all of those. 
uh, save them to our package.json file, right? So we're good to go there. And then I'm going to just create an index.js file, open that up in Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to paste in that little snippet that we copied off of their page, right? So let's, let's talk about what's happening in this snippet. So the first thing we're doing is we're grabbing Axe Builder or Axe WebDriver JS. This is basically going to be a tool that will tell Selenium how to do automated testing of the page. We're grabbing WebDriver. So that's Selenium WebDriver. This is basically the tool that's going to automate you know, opening up a browser and sending commands to it. We start things off by creating a new instance of WebDriver. And we tell it which browser we want it to use. So it could use Firefox, Chrome, Safari, what have you. Uh, in this case, I'm going to change it from Firefox over to Chrome, just because I, I did this demo earlier with Chrome, and I, I've got that all set up. And then once that's ready, we're going to take our Selenium instance. We will tell it which URL to open. So here, I'm going to tell it to open my blog. So I'll change that to rob.sin.me. And again, if you were doing automated testing or something like that, you could spin up a local server and, and point it at localhost like 8080 or something like that. That works. This returns a promise for when it's finally ready to go. And then we say, all right. Uh, take Axe Builder, make sure it has been passed the instance of Selenium WebDriver, and then tell it to analyze the current page. And when it does that, it's going to return a JavaScript object full of results. So things that failed, things that passed. And what I want to do here is just log those results. And I'm actually going to filter this down to just log violations. So I don't want to see like things that passed just yet. I just care about the violations, right? And we're going to see if this matches what the Chrome extension was outputting earlier. Uh, now, there's one more thing that we need to do before this is ready to run. We're also going to need to install Chrome Driver for Selenium. So every browser has a sort of specific binary that it needs to work with Selenium. So Firefox, Safari, Chrome, they've all got a binary that you've got to go install. If you run Axe right now and you don't have one of those binaries installed, it'll actually log a little error, and it'll give you the URL to download the correct binary that you need. So I think I've got that uh, URL saved here. So it's at chromedriver.storage.googleapis.com slash index.html. I will drop that down in the show notes. But we go to this page, and you'll just see a bunch of numbered directories. It's not super helpful. I wish there was just a button that was like, get the latest. But basically, you can follow the, um, the, the number ordering here. Even though this thing says latest release, what it'll do is it'll download a text file, and it'll tell you the number of the latest release to download. So you can click this if you want and get the text file. It'll eventually tell you that 2.27 is the current latest release. Um, the numbers just go in order, right? So 2.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then it jumps up to 2.10, 11, 12, right? So the ordering is a little funky there. Uh, but you just want whatever is sort of the highest point release at this point, so 2.27. So you click that, pick your platform. Mine is uh, Mac 64 zip. And that is going to download a little binary. And what I've done is I've taken that binary and I've just dropped it into my user directory. I created a bin directory and I've dropped Chrome driver right in there um, with you know, another binary that I, I had from a previous project. right? So I'm just dumping binaries in here. The last thing that I want to do is I want to set that directory up on my path so when Unix is trying to look up that program, it knows which directory to look into. The way that we do that is um, I'll show you how to do it on, on a Mac for a, a PC Windows. Um, I'm sure there's some good instructions out there, but I, I don't know them off the top of my head. I'm not a Windows user. Uh, but maybe I can add some to the show notes. For a Mac, what you want to do is you want to check out your uh, .bash underscore profile or your Z shell config file, if you use Z shell, which I do. Uh, but I'll show you how to do this with bash profile, because most people use bash. And what we want to do is we just want to drop in a line that looks kind of like this. So we're saying, all right, take our current path, right? So export this path variable. We'll say, take the current path. So when we say dollar sign path, that's basically what we mean. It means sort of use the path variable, expand it. And then use a colon to stick one addition to the end of it. So we'll say, use our user's home directory, right? So users Rob Dotson slash bin, OK? So now we're saying, hey, when you're looking at programs, when I go in the terminal, I type Chrome driver, look through all the directories on the path until you get to my user directory, look in the bin folder, and you should see something there, right? You can verify that this has worked after you save all that. Restart your terminal. It's very important to do that. So it loads the new profile. And you can type which Chrome driver. And it should give you a path to where you've got your Chrome driver binary. So now we're actually ready to go. We can run that JavaScript file that we just created. So I'll do node index right for my index.js file. And this will go out. It'll hit the web. And now it is logging all of the violations from my site. 
And you can see it's basically the same ones that we had from that Chrome extension. So it's telling me we've got color contrast issues, and it's logging all the nodes with color contrast issues. The HTML element needs a language attribute, and we've got some links that need better text, right? So this is what you can do to start adding Axe to your automated test process. And if you go back to the repo for Axe WebDriver, and you scroll all the way down to the bottom there, uh, there's some examples, like this one running a single rule. This example actually shows you how to use it with, uh, with Mocha and Chai. So if you want to you know, integrate it with some existing test framework, you can absolutely do that. And there's some good docs here that show you how to go about that. The last thing that I want to show off is very similar to the Chrome extension, and that's Axe CLI. So it's basically the same thing, but we're running it just from the terminal. We don't have to write any JavaScript or anything like that. We can just install it and run it from the command line whenever we want. So if you go over to dqlab slash axe CLI, so this is a recently released project. It bundles up Axe Core. It actually bundles up the Selenium WebDriver stuff as well, and it just lets us run the whole thing from the command line just as one single command. So we do npm install dash g axe CLI. So pull that down. Doo, 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 doo. NPM does its thing. Boom. All right. And now we're going to do basically the same thing. Um, but this time, I, you know, I'll, here, I'll just uh, go to my desktop, right? So I, I haven't written any JavaScript. I'm just on my desktop in my terminal. And I'm just going to run axe. And I'll put in my site again. Right? And now this is going to actually use PhantomJS, though I can tell it to use Chrome Driver if I want. Uh, but it's using PhantomJS to go and check out my site. It's got very pretty colors now, and it's logging all of the issues that it found. So very similar to the Chrome extension, but I just run it from my terminal. So I've shown a, a number of different ways to get up and running with Axe. So hopefully, you've got the tools that you need now to start adding it to your own process. I think it's a really, really awesome project. I think the folks working on it are doing really killer work. Um, so definitely, if you, if you like it, go you know, star it and, and support them on Twitter and tell them that you, you think their work is awesome. That about covers it for today. If you have any more questions for me, as always, you can leave them in the comments, or you can hit me up on a social network of your choosing. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of AlleyCast, you can always catch more over in our playlist or click the little subscribe button and you'll get an email notification whenever we launch new stuff on the channel. As always, thanks for watching.